Award-winning children's author and illustrator Chris Van Allsburg charmed a capacity crowd in Central Library's Clues Auditorium on November 19th. He presented a brief history of his career in children's literature and described what led him on his career path. Uh, I remember maybe being the first kind of evidence that I had an impulse to be an artist or at least an impulse that was driven somewhat by imagination. Um, I was an enthusiastic and avid model builder when I was a boy. I built model boats, I built model planes, model cars. Um, when school got out uh, and summer vacation began, I can remember I was around eight or nine and, and I had talked my parents into buying me a very large model of the, uh, of the HMS Victory, uh, uh, Horatia or Nelson's uh, battleship from, excuse me, Trafalgar. So a big model. I mean, it was really big, uh, and I was, you know, only that big. So, so, the, so, but I was undaunted by this, and I'm amazed now that my parents had the confidence in me. But they had seen in me already a uh, a kind of a fastidious nature, um, a kind of um, I don't know, fussy w w craftsman, a young craftsman perhaps. So they bought me this model, and I. I disappeared in the basement. I went down there in June, and they saw me uh, t toward the end of August. All done, and looking pretty good, as I recall. Um, all the rigging in place and everything. And um, odd now that they weren't worried about socializing their son, happy to have him in the basement, uh, out, of the, out of the way. Um, but as I say, I connect that with an early kind of imaginative life because one of the pleasures that I got from building not just the model boats but the model cars and the model planes was imagining uh, flying the plane, imagining being on the boat and so all the while I was working on it I was actually not simply building something in my basement I was actually on the high seas uh, sailing along. So I guess while I didn't express as a child this interest in writing stories, I did as a child, I think, have an active imagination and something that, you know, uh, was a force in my life. Van Allsburg also gave the audience a preview of his newest book, The Misadventures of Sweetie Pie. My children got to be around four and eight and started lobbying mom and dad for a pet. And we weren't ready for the dog thing yet. Uh, had some allergy issues around cats and but so there was this negotiation it always you know starts in households the same way that the kids are going for the highest the biggest thing they can get so they they want a pony right and so you come in really low you come in with an ant farm right and they say no 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 and they say, say they want a dog and you say well how about uh, a, a, a lizard and they say no 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 and then they get down to the bunny, you know, and they, oh, how about a goldfish, you know? So we, you almost always end up, most families end up in, in, in gerbil, hamster, guinea pig territory, right? So I got my daughters in the car and we, you know, because that was a deal. And, and, and I was not insensitive to the, um, to the value that uh, pet caregiving can have for children because creates kind of empathy. There's something else that needs care besides them. And, and so, so we, we liked that idea. But still, when we got to the, um, got to the pet store, I could still see my, my you know, we bring them in the, and the girls are looking over their shoulder at the dogs, you know. And, and I'm trying to lead them to the gerbil and, and guinea pig territory uh, and hamsters. So they picked out a hamster and brought it home. And, and despite all of the kind of, you know, I think sincere efforts on their part, they were young, they were four, they were eight, they weren't going to give the animal what it needed. And so after a while, um, some neglect and the animal went off and became uh, a classroom pet and went from getting not enough attention to way too much attention. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and some of that attention included, you know, every child wanted the pleasure of feeding the guinea pig, so he he became the size of the Hindenburg. And, uh, and so I had a lot of sympathy for this animal, and I, 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 I knew it wasn't on PETA's radar, 
uh, you know, but it should be because because even though even though I think you set out to you know teach your child a, about caregiving for an animal at the same time there's a there's a process that's going on that that that, that, that relegates them to kind of like a a, a plaything and they they become something less and so that is the theme of the misadventures of Sweetie Pie. He goes through a series of of owners. None of these kids are none of these kids are well, one of them is. Uh, but some of them are kind of neglectful. One is a little kind of maybe unkind because she, um, we'll see if, uh, yeah. Yeah, so she, uh, she, yeah, we can see he's getting bigger. Uh, one, one, boy, one boy wants, t says, yeah, I'd love the hamster. Let me bring him home. And, and, and he's got a dog, you know, so that doesn't work out. Uh, and then he gives them to a, a young girl who, uh, who likes to dress him up in clothes. And hamsters don't really like wearing clothes. Um, sticks him in a ball, uh, and, he, and, and the hamster rolls away. Gets left out overnight. Um, gets rescued again uh, by a young girl whose, whose mother, whose mother uh, has refused already the idea of a hamster in the house because she believes they're too much like rats, and when she sees actually sees the one in the house, she tries to beat it with a broom. Uh, so this hamster ends up as a class pet again. And um, so it has a decent morning because when all the kids come in, they interact with it for a while, but the rest of the day, it's in a cage. This cage, fortunately, positioned by a window, and the hamster makes friends with some truly wild beasts. The lecture was followed with a book signing by the author, book sales courtesy of Kids, Inc.